What's up guys, just a quick troubleshooting guide for GPU instability with AMD GPUs. Now I'm just going to make this specifically regarding artifacting, not crashing, which can be related to the system stability overall, and not particularly relating to power issues. Although ideally just make sure that you're running, you know, the minimum wattage if you Google that. Uh, usually there'll be some decent recommendations on the first page. And check a few different sites. Don't just take the top result. You want to check a few different results and make sure you're running a decent brand with, you know, 80 plus bronze certification. And if it's an older PSU and you're running on the minimum wattage, just also take into account that an older PSU will have less stable voltage uh, because they do degrade over a matter of years. So it just really depends. Um, if you're running like mid or higher to what, what the GPU needs, then you should be fine. But it's more for the people running the absolute minimum wattage uh, power supply. So in saying that, I'm just going to get into the software side of troubleshooting now. So assuming your power supply is all right, and assuming your system is actually stable, your RAM and CPU, and they've been stability tested. If not, I recommend HCI MemTest and ASUS RealBench. Uh, I'll link those in the comments below. And then it just gets down to troubleshooting. So basically, if you're getting this kind of artifacting, the main cause of it is either GPU core or memory instability. And as you can see here, he's got artifacting at the desktop. It's an RX 570, which is an older model, and it's not happening at minimum or maximum when he adjusts the VRAM clock. Now, what this tells me, this maximum one is an interesting one, is that the card could possibly be secondhand, and someone has BIOS modded the card. So when, when you BIOS mod a card, particularly for mining, what they do is, uh, similar with system memory, is they adjust the timings of the default frequency of the card so that if it crashes and it has to reload, the timings will be tuned for optimal hash rate at the default speed. So it'll be in a certain range, like maybe 1700 to 1800 uh, megahertz on the VRAM will have Titan timings. And what happens is those Titan timings can actually become unstable for producing a graphical workload, but it was perfectly stable for mining. So that's the reason I think the minimum and max, like actually overclocking the VRAM, puts it into a higher megahertz, but the timings go back to default once because it's in it's in steppings. Like so, there might be a set of timings for 17 to 1800, and another set of timings for 1900, uh, 1800 to 1900, and so on. So when he overclocks or underclocks it, he gets some stability, but then he still gets a crash when he launches the games, which tells me that either the GPU is on the way out or there's a temperature issue as well. So the way that I would address this is I would attempt to undervolt with either a minimum or maximum, preferably minimum, just to rule out um, temperatures altogether. But I'd underclock the memory and undervolt the core. And what that'll do is it'll reduce temperatures, which will improve stability. And it'll also help with the VRAM temperatures, not just the core when you undervolt. So if you're hopefully you're running on the 2020 drivers, because that's what I'm doing the guide for. Normally, you'll be on automatic. And to undervolt, you would just hit this option. And it, I, I will go a step further, though. When you undervolt and hit proceed, it'll give you a value. And that value could be anything, depends on your model of GPU. Uh, for me, it's actually 1100 if I'm not recording. And then memorize that value and then switch to manual mode, enable GPU tuning, advanced control so you can see the fine numbers, and put that value in here for voltage. So for me, it would be 1100. Um, and then drop the clock speed by around about, like round it to the lowest 100. So if you're on 2650 or if you're on 1750, lower it to 1700, for example. So I might go down to 2600 for an undervolt. And that will reduce temperatures uh, considerably. It'll reduce the hotspot temp. It'll have a side effect of helping the VRAM temperatures because often the cooling is shared, like they're so close together. And then you can put a custom fan profile on top, which will also help with idle instability and load instability. So what this does is, by default, you can see this default fan curve is very relaxed. It's actually not that good, especially for a tropical climate. The GPU fan will only spin up to 60% at 61 degrees. And then that allows the GPU to heat up a lot quicker compared to the fan spinning up to, say, 70% at 60 degrees. So you'd set a more aggressive fan curve. And if you're having those idle stability issues, turn off zero RPM. And then you'd adjust something like this. I'll just give a rough example. 40% uh, fan speed at 40 degrees, so that's basically idle. Uh, 50 at 50, maybe 65 at 60, and then around about 70 to 80 is where you want to have a limit. Like 
you can run at 80 degrees and it can be stable for some cards, but generally when your VRAM's heating up, you can't always see the temperature of your VRAM. And that's where the higher fan curve will have a side effect of helping the VRAM temperatures because they follow the core temperature. So your core temperature might be fine um, at, for example, 60 degrees, but your VRAM could be getting hot. So that's why we've set it so aggressive as well. So just as an example, I might do 70 at 70 degrees, but then if my GPU cooler, because different coolers have different noise levels, usually they get loud at 70%, and that might be your limit. So then you'd have to either go into further undervolting or look at your case airflow if you don't want to go over that limit of 70%. But if you're pushing like 80 degrees, for example, at 70%, then you'd have to make that choice. Am I going to undervolt further to try to get the temps down? Or am I going to just allow it to get that little bit noisier? And at least at, at, at least on the additional benefit, like one one good part about having that higher fan speed is you'll, you'll know by noise when your GPU is actually running really hard without having to run an OSD. So if you hear your fan spinning up to what sounds like 80, you'll know that you're running 80 degrees and go, oh, I've got to check those temps. So that can also be used as an indicator to GPU load. But I like to limit it. I usually, I find like even with this card, if I set it like this, it'll never actually get to 70. It'll stay in between 60 to 70 degrees at the, at, with, the, with my particular cooler. And then the additional steps you could do is you could look into repasting the GPU if your temps are just skyrocketing way past there. The paste, especially if it's secondhand, could have gone bad. Um, the factory paste could just be not that good of an application. Sometimes the applications are off. And you'd have to look into that, but then there's a possible warranty issue for newer cards. But usually undervolting alone will actually get the temps down quite a lot. And then after you've done that, this is the other important part that not everyone's aware of. You hit apply, right? This is an example. So you can see I've hit apply and put this fan profile on. But don't just hit apply and then go off testing. Because if it crashes, what will happen is you'll, get, you'll usually get a pop-up. But what will happen is this notification here... When the driver crashes due to instability, because the settings you've set are still unstable, you'll actually get two icons, and one icon will be the crash driver where you mouse over it, it'll disappear, and the second icon will be the driver that's restarted. So one icon will work and one will disappear when you mouse over it. And then you've got to go back to square one. So instead of doing that, make sure you save a profile here at the top right. There's a save profile button. Click it and save a profile with your frequency and voltage, and that'll also save your fan curve. So you might save it as, for me, it would be 26-1100 um, MV. And that way I would know, okay, I was testing that last. And then if the driver crashes, I can just hit load profile and reload that profile and then go and continue adjustment and then save another profile so that you've got like multiple profiles of testing different settings to try to find what's the most stable, what gives you the most efficiency and temperatures and stability. So you don't really need to play with power tuning for default. Uh, it's really only important for high-end overclocking where you're maxing the power limits out, or if you're doing BIOS modding, that's where the power tuning really comes into play. But for stability, increasing the power limit will just increase temperatures and power load, which is generally bad for stability. You, you want to try to minimize it. Um, but then because your card is still within its range at stock, when you actually undervolt, you're going under the voltage or the power tuning uh, limitations. So having it on 6% is not really going to matter too much. Uh, on minus six. It's more if you put it on minus six running at stock or overclock frequency. So if you're running like up here at default and then you add the power limit six, that's where it'll actually make a bigger difference. But if I try to put a power limit at 1100 MV and I put it on 6%, I'm still well will at, at my undervolt, I'm still well within the power tuning spec. So 6% is actually not going to affect anything, um, believe it or not. So one way you can check is in hardware info which is a good app to use. You can also get your memory junction temperature in there. If I load up hardware info, now I've customized mine because you can right click and customize the values. You can change the font and all that stuff. But basically you can see your power limit. And as you can see here at default, my power limit is 203 watts. And even if I go under load with this undervolt, the highest I'll ever see is under, 100, uh, under 160 watts. So basically 203 is not anywhere near I'm not getting anywhere near it. And if I hit, if I put 6% and hit apply, the power limit goes down to 191. So as you can see, that's not going to make a difference if I'm sitting well below the actual usage. So 
This is an example, I'll load up a GPU load. Uh, Heaven's a good one for testing stability too, because you can have it running while you're tuning settings. And you might find that, um, and you can load it up really quick. That's the other important thing. If it crashes, you can just reload it really fast. But as you can see here, with 99% GPU load, I'm only at 126 watts on my GPU ASIC power. So that's basically your power limit in wattage. So that's where, you know, you see some guides, they'll tell you do this, do that, adjust your power limit, put it to this for undervolting. And they don't even like know that it's not doing anything because they don't show you that that's actually. So if I set it all the way up here, you can see here having my power limit increased to 233 watts is not going to matter because I'm running at an undervolt of 1100 MB. So I'm just explaining that a little bit, but generally you don't have to worry about it for undervolting. And you don't have to worry about VRAM tuning because usually you can't underclock. Sometimes you can. If you can underclock it, underclock it if, you're, if you think you're getting VRAM instability. But you can also check your memory junction temperature, which you can see here the default name for this value, I just put it as VRAM, is GPU memory junction temperature. And if that's pushing like 70 degrees at idle, there's a good chance that under load it'll push 80, 90. And around 90 is where you get gaming instability. Um, it depends on the model of GPU and the type of VRAM. But generally, you want to try to keep it under 90, like rather than pushing the limit. The max spec for most GDDR is 95C for operating. And then the memory junction where damage can start to occur is 100C. And there is no, um, there's no actual memory protection in place on the majority of GPUs. There are some sites that tell you that there's like a throttle temperature, which is like 110C. That's not necessarily true, because if you look up the specification for the type of memory, for example, GDDR6, in the specification feed, there is a timing, temperature-based timing adjustment. So when the temperature gets hot enough, the timings will loosen. And that has an effect of throttling the performance, but it's not actually a temperature protection. So you could run it at 110, and your card won't shut down until your memory fails, like your memory literally cooks itself. So you can kill your card by having high temperatures and no thermal protection for the VRAM will actually activate. So I just want to make that clear because I've, I've literally had 39 RTX 3090 users comment on my channel and say, I was running at this temperature because I didn't know that, you know, over 100 is dangerous. And he was running like between 108 to 115. And he PM'd NVIDIA and NVIDIA support said that it's fine, it's within spec. And then his GPU literally died two weeks later. So that's how I know that there's no protection. It, it's a bit anecdotal, but I don't think the guy was lying. Like, there's just no reason for a someone to make that stuff up. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. I'm getting a bit off topic here, but mainly, you know, do that. And then you can use the stress test option in the driver to get like a quick idea. Is it going to be stable? But it's still always better to run an actual GPU benchmark where you can check for artifacts visually, because this won't show you a visual representation. So I like to use heaven and, you know, just reload it if it crashes and reload your profiles and continue testing. If you're still getting high temperatures, you have to look at your case airflow um, or con consider undervolting further or changing the thermal paste if the thermal paste could be old. So that's my rough guide. And if that helps you, then please leave a like and possibly subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.